So with rank A ground forces falling out for Warthorn, I think it's time again to actually go over some of my big tips that I think that you should know whenever it comes to ground forces for at least ground RB. Now there isn't like a end all be all way to just get better at ground RB. You do definitely have to learn the maps. You do have to learn the weak spots of the tanks that you face. And these types of tips are more or less going to give you like a one or two percent increase into your performance in games. But they're definitely not just going to make you a nuke machine overnight just getting nukes every single game. They're definitely going to help you increase your grind because one once again, if you're more skillful within the game, especially now with skill bonuses, you're able to get more RP and SL, especially whenever it comes to using premiums or anything like that. So one of the biggest tips I can give you within War Thunder is to have good lineups. Now I understand that there's some nations that just do not have lineups at certain BRs or the vehicles that they have are just not that great. The point I'm trying to make within this is that you need to have variety. And the reason you want to have variety is because you want to be able to just hit the go to battle button whenever it comes to War Thunder, spawn on a map, and you'll have something that it will at least work on that map. Now there's some vehicles like the mouse for example that did not work on you know big maps where you have to travel a bunch but there's vehicles like the martyr that definitely would work well on those sort of maps now at the same time if you get something like berlin or advanced to the rhine which is in my opinion a shorter range map stuff like the mouse is going to be really good and stuff like the martyr honestly would probably be pretty bad because you're having to face a bunch of people head on and there's not really much flanking opportunity within those maps now for me at least i have two types of lineups that i really like to bring out so i have my grinding lineups which are the vehicles i'm currently trying to grind out within tech trees or just vehicles I need to spade or stuff like that. So these types of lineups I have, they're normally like two vehicles I need to spade out whenever it comes to the tech tree itself. Uh, if there's, you know, more, uh, maybe we'll bring like two or three. But my whole thing about this lineup is, is I need to have something that if I start to go into the late game, of different types of games especially if you're hitting like plus 10 minutes within the match itself you've already died like one or two times you need vehicles that are able to carry the game into the later matches and for me at least that's what i try to do so one or two vehicles is the max that i'll bring out for spading purposes and then the rest of my lineup will basically be premiums that are already you know maxed out or vehicles that are already spaded that are able to carry their own whenever it comes to the matchmaker itself because majority of the time i never touch these vehicles within the lineup because you know the one or two vehicles normally suffice whenever it comes to that but i do want that possibility of the match going on longer to be able to carry it with vehicles that are already spaded and also premiums that I already have. Now the second type of lineup which I think kind of applies to everyone is my spaded lineup. So this is whenever I've already pretty much got everything throughout that tech tree in that battle rating or battle rank. I will just have a spaded lineup and for me at least this is exactly how I like to put my lineups. I normally like to have one heavy tank normally like one or two MBTs or medium tanks whenever it comes to the vehicle itself. Especially at top tier you're going to see more medium tanks and more MBTs just in general but one or two is usually suffice for that. I normally like to bring one or two light tanks as well, one SPA, and then I like to bring at least one aircraft which is able to do multi-roll capabilities, whether it be going after other planes and helicopters and able to drop like one or two bombs. For me at least, I don't really ever like to have just a dedicated cast, you know, support aircraft, because I feel like in War Thunder, cast is one of those things that if you're able to take out very, very quickly before they're able to drop your bombs and stuff, it makes your spawn points go down very quickly and you're more likely to win games whenever it comes to that. Now, I don't discredit people who want to bring in cast or orientated aircraft the only problem is especially for a player who doesn't spend much money on the game crew slots is very limited whenever it comes to war thunder and even these uh suggestions i'm making is kind of pushing it on the amount of crew slots people majority of time will have so the next portion of this video we'll be going over the binoculars and as well as commander sight and commander fire control these three things can be really good within certain vehicles the commander sight in my opinion is one of those niche things that is good on certain things but the binoculars are one of the most underutilized equipment whenever it comes to war thunder because they can do extremely good stuff as some people i don't think understand that they can do so the first thing is we will go over to keybinds so definitely go into your controls make sure that you have a binocular key keybound this is a key that i would put in somewhere very convenient because you're going to be using it a lot especially searching for targets and ground forces the next two things is the commander view and as well as the commander fire control so the commander view can be initiated two different ways you can put it in to the you know cycle of either your gunner view or your binocular view in my opinion i I don't particularly prefer that just because it does kind of interfere especially if you want to quick switch to one of them and you're having to go through two other settings for me at least i just keep buying it as something that's not particularly in the way now the final key bind that you want is a keybind called commander fire control basically what this does is whenever you're in the commander view you're actually able to shoot from this view and you're able to you know pick off targets it can be a little bit good special with atgm vehicles where you're able to use the commander view site to get a little bit better above your tank whenever it comes to view view was and you're able to actually shoot at targets from you know different things but it's a really good keybind to just have just so if you ever get yourself caught in commander view you definitely can at least shoot from that view which is always really good so as we got all the keybinds out of the way whenever it comes to binoculars as well as commander view let's 
talk about binoculars in greater detail because there's a lot of hidden features within them that just make them a really useful tool whenever it comes to ground forces. So one of the features from binoculars that some people don't know is that you can actually range find from them. So you can stay in cover and range find a target that's kind of across the map and you're able to peek out and get a direct hit on them as soon as you peek out from your cover, which is always a really cool thing whenever it comes to War Thunder because once again, the people that get the first shot off are majority of the time the people who are going to win. But if your first shot is missing all the time, then you're definitely going to have some issues. But that's definitely one thing that you can do. You can range find with them and you can use that to your extreme advantage because some people don't know they can actually do that. So the next key feature of binoculars when War Thunder is bino shooting. So bino shooting is one of those very pretentious topics that fish that should be in the game or not, but it is. So definitely you should learn how to do this because it is a key thing that you can actually do whenever it comes to shooting over cover or shooting through snow or shooting stuff that you cannot see. Because the binoculars are above the tank, you're able to get a better viewpoint, especially if you're behind cover and you're actually able to see the enemy. Now the way the binocular shooting works, and it's definitely something that you have to get kind of used to and also practice before you actually do it within real games, is you need to be able to kind of push your binoculars to the enemy itself, you know, kind of highlight them. And there's two things that you'll have to make sure that happens. If you want to confirm that you can actually make a shot through something, there's two reticles. So you have your big reticle that is kind of like pointing out where you're kind of pointing at. And then you have your gun reticle, which is the kind of smaller one, which is also a bit darker whenever it comes to white. If both of those line up within your binocular scope, then you're actually able to shoot vehicles through that binocular scope and actually hit them, which is also just crazy to think about. Whenever you have this happen, you will hit them unless they're at range. You do definitely have to range find that, but it is one key thing that you know. So the way that you binocular shoot with a War Thunder is you take your binoculars, you make sure that they're on top of the enemy themselves. Also make your make your turret, you know, traverse there. All you gotta do is left click with that whenever it comes to your mouse and then you just basically see if those two line up and as soon as they do you press into your gunner sight view while holding left click whenever it comes to your mouse or whatever you use to shoot your cannon and as soon as you do that it will fire the cannon off and it should get you a hit on the target itself and we can show it off as right now because this is one of my favorite spots within the game where you can actually do some binocular shooting whenever it comes to Fun City. So that's not all of the things that you can actually do with the binocular view but because we're going to be talking about that later in the video we're going to save it till then so make sure to watch the rest of the video to definitely learn some more tips on binoculars. So the next tip I'm going to give you guys is ammo taking. So ammo taking is one of those skills with the War Thunder if you actually learn it and actually use it. It's very easy to understand by the way. It's one of those that would just increase your survivability within matches like crazy. So what I mean by ammo taking is taking only the necessary rounds that you need for a particular tank. Because if you take more than you need, your ammo racks actually grow larger whenever it comes to vehicles themselves. So for me at least, and this is just from me testing thousands and thousands of hours within the game, I normally like to bring a around 20 to 25 rounds just depending on what the vehicle is this normally goes for anything that's between like i'd say a 57 millimeter all the way up to you know the biggest cannons in the game just depending on you know if you're running out of ammo you definitely want to bring more but the thing about it is is if you bring less ammo within your tanks and if we look at the leopard one which is always the best example to actually look at you can actually see whenever we go into a test drive that the rounds within the front carousel are kind of just depleted because we didn't bring as many rounds when it comes to things and when people shoot in that position of where the rounds should have been that they basically just shoot through empty space and you don't get ammo rack very easily now the thing about it is is that there is this thing called a first stage ammo rack the first stage ammo rack within a tank will always be filled with ammo no matter what unless you just bring zero rounds but i doubt anyone would actually do that so it's one of those things that can help a ton of vehicles but also you have to realize that if your first stage ammo rack is just in a badly positioned place within a tank you're still going to get hit there a bunch and you're going to explode at the end of the day of things but making sure that you only bring around like 20 to 25 rounds is my recommendation for pretty much every tank in the game. There are some vehicles that will definitely need more whenever it comes to that, but you can definitely tell once you start playing with that vehicle if you need to increase the ammo count, or even if you're just seeing that you're going through maybe like five or 10 rounds per game on average, you can maybe even actually decrease the amount of ammo that you bring into maybe like 15 to about 20 rounds, but definitely don't decrease it to an amount to where you just run out of rounds every game because you do not want to have to go to capture points unless you absolutely need to at the end of the day of things whenever it comes to your ammo to actually replenish it. So the next tip from War Thunder is squad pings. So whenever you think of squad pings, you're being like dog. This is something that maybe would help me if I actually have friends and actually play with squad members, which you will. And if you definitely want to try to find some squad members, definitely come to the Dark Life Discord. We definitely have not really promoted it that much, but I will answer questions and maybe in the future if we 
you know, don't have any edgy people. We find it until we start playing with you guys whenever it comes to matches. We'll definitely have to deal with that. But yeah, if you have any questions, especially when it retains this video, Discord is definitely the best way to go. Not really promoted it much, but now I do think that is the perfect time to actually do it. But for squad ping, so squad ping is one of those things that you would think would be just for squads, which is not. So squad ping, basically what it does is you're able to ping a certain area of the map and you're able to kind of show your teammates, which are in your squad, where enemies can be at. But it can be used for more than that. So you're able to use it to ping, let's just say that you have a tank in front of you, you want to drop artillery on them, you can squad ping them, and you can look on your map and then actually drop the artillery directly on top of a tank without actually having to guesstimate of where the artillery would drop at. You can also do this with your teammates as well, especially whenever it comes to just random matchmaking, if you have joined in a squadron automatically on. If you have a teammate, maybe you're playing together and you're actually able to see each other, you can squad mark somebody for them and they're actually able to see it as well. This also helps you in cast planes because you're able to put your squad mark on a vehicle that you've seen whenever you passed over the battlefield and as soon as you look back around to actually look at the enemy themselves you can squad ping them again kind of never lose the location of them because i know for aircraft especially with the clouds now it's very easy to lose track of tanks on the battlefield which can make it a little bit helpful to do by just squad pinging them so if you do think the squad pinging feature is for you all you have to do is go to your controls go to common which is on the top of the screen and then all you have to do is search up squad and you'll see a keybind called set target for squad so basically put that on a key that really doesn't give us much, much use because once again it's just one of those that you maybe will have to hit once or twice to show where the enemy is at but other than that it's a really good feature i definitely recommend it even if you're a solo player because you're able to use it a little bit you know better and especially for me whenever it came to streaming i'm able to like point out stuff to different people because you know the little yellow chevron will pop up on the screen and the viewers will actually be able to see it as well so the next tip i'm going to give you guys is how to determine what battle rating that you're in in a grand rb game now there can be other ways to do this you can definitely just look at the tanks themselves and you know over time you'll be able to see what tanks are you know above you and what tanks are below you but the easiest way to do it is that you look at the spawn point cost of the vehicles that you have so to make this video just simple we're not going to be going over the rest of the spawn point cost for like light tanks heavy tanks tank destroyers all that sort of stuff because the big one that majority of people will have is some sort of medium tank in the lineup now you do have to remember this medium tank it does have to be the correct battle rating that you're playing at so like for example let's just say that you're playing 5.7 you have the t 3485 if the t 3485 is the highest br vehicle within your lineup that is the one that you want to go with so now let's look at this little chart that i made to actually determine medium tank spawn cost so if you want to know if you're in the max br which means that you got a down tier you'll have 150 spawn points for a medium tank if you want to know if you got a 0.3 up tier you will have 130 point spawn cost if you want to know if you got a 0.7 up tier you have 120 spawn point cost and if you want to know if you got fully up tier to 6.7 if you for example you're playing 5.7 your spawn point cost for a 5.7 medium tank will be 100 spawn point which means that you're able to see what kind of battle rating that you're in now another thing to note whenever it comes to battle rating this is the only determinative way to actually see what battle rating that you've been put in because once again you can actually have teammates which do not spawn in their max rank vehicles which makes it a little bit iffy on your team's part but at the end of the day this is the only way to see what type of opponent you may actually find it within your battles so the last thing to note about match maker and as well as just br ratings in general is that there's this thing called quantitative matchmakers so basically what this means is that you're only able to see a maximum of four vehicles which are a complete one point br above you so like let's just say that you're playing 5.7 if you get thrown into a 6-7 game there can only be a possible for both teams of four people on each side to actually have a 6.7 vehicle within their lineup which means that even if you get fully up tiered you're not going to see just a full team of like 6.7 vehicles you can only see a full team of you know vehicles that are either a 0.3 or 0.7 above you but never a 0.1 above you so the next tip within this video is definitely get a headset and this is one of those things that you might have to spend just a little bit of money on but definitely get a decently good headset to actually hear stuff whenever it comes to war thunder if you want to be better at the game sound is one of those things that is just going to make you extremely better within the game it's one of those that would probably give you like a 10 percent boost just in your performance because sound just tells you so much stuff about what is happening within your matches and also this gives you an edge on some of your opponents there's countless times that i can remember of people just walking straight past an enemy even though like you can hear the engine of the enemy or you know there's helicopter rushers that come in but you can hear the helicopters coming in and if you're able to prepare for that sort of thing it makes it extremely better whenever it comes to you know actually doing well with the game so for me at least these are my sound settings definitely kind of you know do it towards whatever you want to do the things that i'm going to note within this though is you want to have gunfire volume to me at least maximum maxed out you want to have your engine volume definitely put down because you don't really need to hear your engine other 
players that it's on and other players engine this one you want to crank to the maximum no matter what crank this one to the maximum because you're able to actually hear other enemy engines very very uh better and also you can hear your friendly engine so definitely uh, remember that if there's a friendly near you it might just be their engine instead of an enemy but being able to hear enemy engines is just so key within more thunder and it's probably one of the biggest tips i can actually give you guys is actually make sure that your sound settings are you know up to spec now the other thing is is that definitely turn off speed of sound it is one of those things that if you want to have it on it's an iffy thing but basically what it does is when someone's supersonic you won't hear them and you'll you know it goes over you also the same thing happens for example with the a10 gun you would get shot at first and then you would hear the rounds or you would hear the gun actually firing after the rounds already hit you so it's definitely one of those things that is just a realism thing it's not really a thing that's going to make you better at the game so i definitely would turn it off so if you got this far in the video definitely make sure to like and subscribe to the video because these types of videos are very time consuming to make and also i just want to make it because i feel like for you guys this is just making you guys better and some of the teams i've seen lately whenever it comes to war thunder within the ground forces they are really bad and hopefully these tips have gave you something that's actually good within the game but the next one we're going to be looking at is knowing your map ping so within war thunder you're able to actually ping the map where you think enemies are at you also can see friendly pings whenever they ping stuff as well you're also able to see stuff like scouts and you're able to see where just different sort of stuff is going about the matches now reading the map within war thunder is probably one of its own videos that needs to be made because it's very complex and i believe actually you could probably just play war thunder by just looking at your map at the bottom right of the screen if you're one of those people that have the map completely turned off please turn it on it's very useful whenever it comes to the game because you're actually able to see where teammates are dying you're able to see where enemies are at especially if they get scouted you're able to see friendly pings because most of the time if people are pinging they're either one or two things they're extremely mad at the game and you're just mad because someone didn't kill somebody or that they're actually pinging something that's completely relevant and you go over there and there's nothing there i've seen that happen before so make sure whenever you're pinging the map it's very useful for your teammate to know that information and as a consumer of those pings make sure to not ignore them because you can be watching the map and also watching the game itself and if you see that your teammates are having trouble whenever it comes to you know maybe they need repaired or maybe they have an enemy that is kind of just you know pushing them as well definitely help them out because that's how you win more games you get more grinding experience from it it just overall is better and we maybe will do a video in the future just covering the whole entire map uh like reading how to read maps within war thunder but as of now just make sure to make sure that you're pinging the map especially whenever you die especially whenever you think there's an enemy in a location especially with the with the tip i just gave you with sound you're able to ping an enemy and show it to your teammates especially if they don't have you know their sound on or they're just blasting music and they can't hear the enemy engines well i've seen so many times people will just go straight past you even though you've seen an enemy engine or you heard the enemy engine and they just get whacked and you're able to go still kill from them but at the end of the day maybe they would still be alive if you pinged the map and actually seen or actually showed them that there's an enemy in that location so this is a tip that's kind of two in one we're going to be covering the one bad habit that i see within war thunder whenever it comes to laser rangefinders and also we're going to be talking about shooting them third person instead of going into the gunner view because it is just faster to do so so whenever it comes to war thunder for some reason i've seen some people especially whenever it comes to you know top tier of where somebody will be around like 300 to maybe 400 meters away from them and instead of just shooting the cannon and kind of just getting the first shot off they spend the time to actually laser range find a target before they would shoot and there's been majority of the time that could have just been prevented of just shooting your cannon or getting used to the gun itself instead of being so reliant on the laser range finder now it is really good to have a laser range finder especially for those shots probably over a thousand meters but once you start getting reliant on it of where every single kill that you see that you press your laser range finder button before you shoot it is just a bad habit to get into and for some reason i feel like it's more or less whenever it comes to premium vehicles because for some reason you People don't know how to aim yet and you know they just press the razor range finder and because it just gives them a basically easy shot they do it every single time which is just bad so the next thing we're going to be talking about is third person shooting it is one of those things that i think that people don't rely on a ton of of if you know that you can just pin the target so for example with just apfsds majority of the time if you go from the side of a target you can just third person shoot them and you know majority of the time center mass will kill them now there is some there's some ways that you would want to not do this, especially if you're using like a Sherman, for example, and you see a Panther around the corner, you don't want a third person to shoot that because, well, for one, if he's facing you, then you won't be able to pin them unless you go for the turret cheeks, which is also just pretty bad. Now, I do think that is one of those things that you need to kind of just get accustomed to, especially just corner peeking and all that sort of stuff. Being the person that is able to shoot fast that are faster than the enemy is just going to make you a way better player in the end of the day of things. Now, there is some times that you'll just scuff the shot and it just happens. I mean, it's going to be one of the things that kind of just happens when we're War Thunder. But being able to not rely on the laser range 
rangefinder and being able to reliably go around a corner instead of aiming with your gunner view and shooting a tank is just two skills I think that always needs to be practiced on and two big tips that I think they should actually focus on especially if you're one of those players that if there's somebody 50 meters or 100 meters away from you and the first instinct that you go to is press your laser rangefinder button and let it do its laser rangefinder stuff there's one of those like habits that you heavily need to break whenever it comes to War Thunder. Wow can you believe it we're almost on the final two tips whenever it comes to this video so the next tip we're going to do is knowing when to relocate whenever it comes to ground rb so there's a couple of things that we need to talk about first before we go into the relocation process at least that i think within my mind so you do definitely need to know how to read the map you know especially whenever you see you know stuff like an enemy dying on the map or you see that your teammates are dying you need to kind of focus that a little bit because let's just say that you're in a really good flanking position but you slowly see that your teammates are falling behind you it may mean that you need to go support them or at the same time it may mean that the enemy is coming toward you especially if you're playing at defensive position which means that maybe you might need to relocate just to get into a better you know position to actually engage the enemy now for me at least the relocation process that i like to do is if i've killed someone and i've been in a position for more than like one or two kills i normally like to relocate because as you know revenge cast is one of those things that comes at you every once in a while and also just people get very vindictive whenever they get killed by something so the majority of the time they'll just come back and kill you with a tank or they'll just cash you which is always a bad thing the thing that i like to do is i either like to push back towards my teammates or i like to push away from them just depending on what kind of thing i'm playing if i'm playing something that has a very slow reload like an is2 i definitely definitely want to have some sort of teammate around me just in case you know there's like three or four people that i'm not able to engage just all at once because you know the reload of the is2 is really slow but if i'm in stuff like the m18 hellcat for example i may want to push away from my teammates to get into better positions to help cover them at the you know end of day of things it really depends on how the match is going and definitely being able to judge the match itself is just going to make you a better player in general and also just learning you know the mini map and just seeing whenever you see a little green or whatever your color that you have as your teammates Whenever you see those disappear, it definitely means there might be an enemy within that area and you may need to relocate just to get a better position on that enemy. So, and finally, we're on the last tip whenever it comes to ground forces and the ground RB. This is a tip that uh, is just a pet peeve of mine. I really hate it and I really wish people would become better because hopefully this video gets to more people where you're actually able to see this tip because it's just one that just grinds my gears whenever it happens to me and that is smoke. Smoke is one of those things that when it works under, I wish they would take out because so many people just use it extremely wrong at the end of the day, I think. Now, what I mean by smoke. So smoke is either your ESS or that you just shoot out smoke grenades and you try to cover your position. Sometimes it can be really good. You have stuff like Mavericks being shot at you. IR smoke is one of the best ways to actually get rid of it, especially if you know there's an 8 in in the area. You can just smoke out and the 8 ins Mavericks will not be able to hit you. This also goes for helicopters. Helicopters are really good to smoke against because it makes it way harder to actually shoot you through the your smoke and you may be able to relocate behind a building or something where you're able to protect yourself the problem is is that people use smoke extremely wrong whenever it comes to tank and take engagement now smoke can be and a very useful thing if someone got a lucky shot on you and like let's just say they injured you across the map if you hit your smoke smoke button sometimes they won't be able to get a follow-up shot very reliably because for one it was just a luck shot on their part and for two you're very far away which means that you may be able to repair it and get into a better position now the one thing is, is that you never want to smoke whenever you have teammates around you which maybe could support you in destroying the enemy and also making it to where you can survive because there's been so many situations of where i'll just be playing let's just say advanced to Ronnie, for example we'll be just good in the city we'll be pushing and because someone got hit because their breach got took out their first response whenever they get hit in war thunder is to press the smoke button and guess what now you've just made it to where your own teammates can't even see the enemy and the enemy can now relocate into better positions and maybe even just push through the smoke there's really nothing that you can do about it especially if you're holding corners or you know corner peeking or stuff like that smoke is something that needs to be used very sparingly with a war thunder and so many people just overuse it and it just makes a bad experience within the game so i really hope these tips within the ground rb definitely help you whenever it comes to war thunder definitely remember you know surviving more in games gives you more rp and sl and also with the new skill bonuses if you're able to do better than the rest of your teammates you're able to get a little bit of a bonus for just doing well within the game even if you lose the game at the end of the day your skill bonus is just a icing on top of the rp and sl that you get so i hope everyone has enjoyed this video definitely if you have some sort of tips that you would recommend within war thunder definitely leave them in the comments of this video and i'll see you guys in the next war thunder video